With the scales of a snake, the tongue of an anteater, and the claws of an aardvark, pangolins are one of evolution's most bizarre creations. Though seeming strange at first, their adaptations are perfectly optimized for consuming insects in the millions. So what makes their design so genius? And why are their distinctive adaptations driving them towards extinction? To find out, we need to take a look at what makes a pangolin unique. Surrounding each individual is a fortress made of large impenetrable scales. Unlike the scales of reptiles, pangolin scales are virtually indestructible, protecting them from even the most deadly predators. At birth, pangolins are completely defenseless and depend on their mothers for protection, holding on to their tails for survival. After about two years, their armor is complete and they venture out on their own. Pangolin scales, like a rhino's horn, are made of keratin, a fibrous protein that also forms mammalian fur, the skin on a frog's hands and feet, and a bird's feathers. Only 70% of a pangolin's body is covered in armor, leaving its belly unprotected. To protect this weak spot, pangolins curl up into a ball and tuck their heads under their tails when threatened. They don't just deter attackers through strength, as they are also razor sharp, meaning a predator runs the risk of hurting itself. During a pangolin's 20 years of life, its scales can be worn down. To combat this, they are connected to the body through blood vessels, giving them a constant supply of nutrients which can be used to repair them. This method is fairly unique among animals, with the majority relying on entirely dead structures, such as bird feathers or turtle shells. But the scales of a pangolin are just one part of its arsenal. To accompany impenetrable defenses, they need their own offensive weapon. The most important are their sharp claws, specialized for drilling into termite mounds at speed. These claws are some of the most advanced in the world, but finding termites is just one of their many uses. Equally as crucial, they allow pangolins to burrow deep into the ground. These burrows can extend an impressive 3.5 meters below the surface. Unlike how animals such as aardvarks and rabbits use burrows to avoid predators, pangolins dig burrows to stay cool during hot weather. After all, there is no reason for a pangolin to hide from predators as they really wouldn't stand a chance. Forest dwelling pangolins also utilize these claws in a unique way both to cling onto branches and tear bark off trees. But strong scales and sharp claws would be useless if they couldn't actually eat their prey. Just like the incredible tube-lipped nectar bat or the giant anteater, the tongues of pangolins are very long. At only half a centimeter wide, their tongue evolved to become perfectly suited for reaching into insect tunnels. This efficient feeding method gives them a huge advantage over other insects Insectivores, whilst a chameleon, for example, struggles with catching a single fly. A pangolin can scoop up thousands of termites in minutes. Along with these adaptations, one more is essential to the pangolin survival, a strong prehensile tail. These tails likely evolved in tree-dwelling ancestors for the same reason tree pangolins use them for today, using it as an extra arm to hang down from branches whilst removing bark from trees. But most pangolins are not tree-dwelling and still have tails so what could they possibly use them for? Well, just like the glyptodons and ankylosaurs did, pangolins use their tails like whips to defend against predators and fight against rivals. To really understand what makes pangolins so successful, we need to take a look at where they live and each of the different species. So where exactly on the planet can pangolins be found? Pangolins have a wide range across Africa and Asia, mostly confined to the tropics. And although many people don't know, there are actually eight different species of pangolin, with all Asian pangolins belonging to the genus Manis. 
Out of all these species, the Philippine pangolin is by far the rarest, restricted entirely to Palawan and a few surrounding islands. Until 1998, it was considered to just be a subspecies of the much more ubiquitous Sunda pangolin. But after careful examination, the Philippine pangolin was found to be its own separate species. As I just mentioned, the Sunda pangolin is far more widespread, ranging from as far north as China to Java in the south, though it has now been wiped out from most of the lowlands. Among Asian pangolins, the Chinese pangolin is the most recognizable, ranging from western Nepal down to Vietnam and Taiwan in the east, which has a far higher concentration of Chinese pangolins than anywhere else in the world. Similar to how the Indian pangolin lives at far higher densities in Sri Lanka, though this time due to a higher availability of food rather than lower rates of poaching. Unlike the three other Asian pangolins, the Indian pangolin doesn't need forest to survive and is often found in open areas. Moving on to Africa, we can find a far greater diversity. In fact, they belong to two separate genera. First of all, there are the tree pangolins, both of whom are unsurprisingly confined to forests, one of which, the long-tailed pangolin, is unique among its relatives, not because of its smaller size at one meter, but because of its distinctive dark ochre scales and black skin. This coloration evolved to help the long-tailed pangolin stay camouflaged during the day as it is the only species that is diurnal, which allows it to coexist with the nocturnal white-bellied pangolin, who covers a similar distribution and ecological niche. The ground pangolins, as you can probably guess, live on the ground, preferring drier and more open habitats. These are the biggest pangolins by far, with the giant ground pangolin reaching an average body length of 1.4 meters, though it is much rarer than its cousin, Teminx pangolin the most well-known and widespread of all pangolins. These two species have an incredible ability to maneuver on their hind legs. Since pangolins live in the tropics without any sweat glands, they are pretty much forced to be nocturnal, which also keeps them safe from predators that are active during the day, such as lions and eagles, although pangolins are actually predators too, relying on tiny insects like ants and termites of which they can eat thousands of a day, meaning they play an incredibly important role in their ecosystems, serving as the main regulators of ant and termite populations. Pangolins are very smart about how they feed too. Instead of exploiting available resources to the point of no return, they always leave a significant portion of each insect colony intact. This allows the colony to rebuild and provide the pangolin with a source of food into the future. This ability to leave colonies intact for future regeneration suggests an instinctive understanding of sustainable foraging that us humans could take some notes from. But what exactly are pangolins? and who did they evolve from? Pangolins belong to a poorly understood and mysterious order of mammals known as Folidota. For over a hundred years, the position of this branch on the tree of life has fiercely been debated. Due to their similarities, it was believed that they were relatives of the Xenotherans, a group of animals containing the anteaters and armadillos. This made perfect sense, as the pangolin's tongue mimics that of the anteater, and its armour is reminiscent of the armadillo. But genetics have since revealed something strange. They are not at all related. Instead, their real relatives are the carnivorans, which contains animals such as bears and and cats, who together with the pangolins form the ferry. These two lineages split an incredibly long time ago, around 80 million years to be exact. Even within pangolins, ancient divides still live on. In fact, the Asian and African pangolins diverged from each other some 41 million years ago. The pangolins themselves are thought to have appeared somewhere in Eurasia, though the fossil record gives few clues. Beyond the living species, one, now extinct pangolin, lived on into modern times, 
Manis paleojapanica. The discovery of this species came in 1926, when bones were uncovered in Java, and once again in 1980 in Sarawak. What they tell us is that it was far bigger than any species alive today, measuring 2.5 meters, and so instinctively they were bestowed the name Giant Asian Pangolin. These fairly recent remains date to between 42 and 47 thousand years ago, soon after modern humans arrived in the region. Two possible theories explain the disappearance of this animal. Perhaps this was an open habitat specialist that adapted to the expansive grasslands that covered Southeast Asia during the Pleistocene, becoming extinct with the disappearance of its habitat. Or what I consider more likely is that humans killed every single last one of them with their bigger size making it harder for them to remain hidden. Although pangolins deserve attention for their unique adaptations and way of life, they have quickly gained notoriety in recent years because of the pandemic. Early evidence suggested a 99% match between viruses found in pangolins and SARS-CoV-2, but this evidence was misinterpreted. It has now been found that it most likely originated in palm civets or other related animals, spreading to humans through the illegal wildlife trade. In fact, masked palm civets were sold at the same market that the virus is believed to have originated in. Fears of this misinformation still persist, as they may they have led people to kill pangolins in huge numbers, further pushing them to the brink. In fact, they are among the most endangered creatures on Earth, with their populations having collapsed in recent decades. This is due to the illegal wildlife trade, where the animals are poached in huge numbers, before being sold in Vietnam and China. Originally, this trade was driven by the false belief that their scales could cure cancer and other diseases. Though now, their decline has increasingly been driven by the demand for their meat, which is seen as a delicacy, fetching an incredibly high price. This demand causes over 100,000 pangolins to be poached each year, equating to over a million per decade. Asian pangolins are now almost impossible to find, after their populations have plummeted by over 95%, and so increasingly, poachers have turned to Africa, which, combined with hunting for bushmeat, has started to cause African pangolins to plummet too, resulting in the pangolin becoming almost completely extinct in Nigeria. Plans to breed these animals in captivity have proved to be challenging, though some promise can be found in Taiwan and Singapore, where pangolins are no longer believed to be in decline. 